What I know for sure is if you focus on the substance, the success will come. And most importantly, let failure be your friend. There are going to be times, of course, where you're gonna win a lot. A lot of things are gonna go your way. And it's wonderful to bask in that adulation and to feel proud of your successes. But it's the times when things go wrong, when you fall or fail, that you're actually going to learn the most about yourself. You know, all those years on the Oprah show, 25 years, we were the number one show for 25 years. And that's because I lived with the intention to serve the audience. When I was able to shift the paradigm to start to looking at, wow, what I have instead of what I don't have, what I have instead of what I thought I'd lost, I was able to begin to turn things around. But it's those moments of being of uncertainty. It's the moments where, you know, all of my mistakes show up on the evening news. You can make a mistake. I can tell if I've done something wrong. It's on the CNN crawl. I can read about it. But learning from the moments where things weren't going so great, being able to get still, to connect with that which I know is God, the force, the power greater than myself, and to come back and realize that in order to move forward, you move forward by taking the next right step. You don't have to know everything to do. You don't have to know all the steps to make, just what is the next right move. And then there's this, I leave you with this. Nobody makes it alone. Nobody. I don't care what they look like. I don't care what their Insta posts say. Nobody makes it alone. And so you will get nowhere without a spiritual practice. You need a spiritual practice. And by that, I mean not necessarily religion. For some people, it is church. For some people, it is meditating. For some people, it's dancing. For some people, it's singing. But you have got to find a way to nurture that which is the essence of you. You've got to find a way to continually give back to yourself. I am committed to service. Service through my work, service through my life's purpose. And if you make a commitment, a conscious intention to be committed to the work that you do, to the relationships that you have, your life will unfold with such beauty and grace through that commitment. You know, every day for until the very final shows of the Oprah Winfrey show, I would have the producers come in and tell me ahead of time what their intention for every show was because I figured out around the second year of doing that show that it wasn't just about being on television and performing that here was this opportunity, this offering I could give to people through the service of a television show to better see themselves through the stories that we're telling and through those stories help themselves to improve their lives. So I started using television as a tool of service. So as you're trying to figure out what do I do, how should I do it? First of all, I will say this, that when you don't know what to do, my girls have heard this over a hundred times, when you don't know what to do, you do nothing. You get still until you do know. Because when you have to ask everybody else, should I, should I, should I do this, should I, should I, and that's whether it's buying a pair of shoes or going with a guy, buying a house, taking a job, should I, should I, should I, should I. When you have to ask everybody else, it means you don't really know the answer fully yourself. So you get still, be still and know the answer will come. So many people are worried about building a brand. I hear kids on social media talking about their brand. And I used to really resent the word when people would say to me, oh, you have this brand, because I never, never even thought about a brand. I just thought about day in and day out, making the best right choice for me. But now I embrace it because I recognize people see me as a brand. 
But for me, it's not a business. It is a question of what do you stand for? And I will say this, you're nothing if you're not the truth. So I have made, I've made a living, I've made a living, I've made a life, I've made a fortune, really, it's fantastic, <laughs> from being true to myself. And, and that's the, if I could leave you with any message today, that is it. Uh, the biggest reward is not financial benefits, though it's really good, you can get a lot of great shoes. <laughs> Nothing wrong with great shoes. But those of you who have a lot of shoes know that having great shoes and a closet full of shoes or cars or houses or square footage doesn't fill up your life. It doesn't. But living a life of substance can. Substance through your service, your offering of your whole self. And the baseline for how do you live a life of substance is whatever is the truth for you. What do you stand for? So I first started making money and it was, you know, my salary or my earnings were published all over the place. I mean, the first year I was like, really? Did I make that much money? Oh my God. Um, it, it was very difficult for me to figure out where my boundaries were because I'd grown up poor and didn't have anything. So it's easy when you don't have anything and people ask you for money. They say, I need 500, you say, I don't have it because I'm just trying to get my rent paid. It's harder when your multi-billion dollar salary is now in the paper and you get a lot of friends and cousins you didn't have before. So how do you set boundaries for yourself? I was having trouble setting boundaries myself for myself for even strangers, people would just show up at my door in Chicago and say, Oprah, I left my husband, please help me. And I would, because she knows I have it. So what I learned was, is that, oh, the reason why people keep showing up is because my intention is to make them think that I'm such a nice person, that you can ask me for anything, you can get me to do anything, I'm gonna say yes, I'm gonna say yes. So. When Stevie called me this time, I thought I'd try out my first no on Stevie. Let's start big. He wanted me to donate some money to a charity, and I didn't want to donate to the charity because I have my own charities, and I care about a lot of people, but the, the, the problem is when you, you have money, everybody thinks you just want to give to everything. So I said to Stevie, uh, I said to Stevie no, and... Um, as a person who has that disease to please, I was waiting for him then to, to say, I will never speak to you again. I will never call you. I will never sing a song for you. And he didn't. He just said, okay. Okay? Okay, it's okay? He said, okay. Check you later. And what I learned from that is, Many times you will have angst and worry about things and put yourself in a state, like someone said this morning because their phone went off, they were mortified over a phone, I said, really? Um, you will put yourself in a state when the other person really isn't even thinking about you. So learning that I could specifically determine for myself what the boundaries were for me, what I wanted to do, give my money, give my time, give of my service to who I wanted to give it to when I did, that I get to make that decision. And just because you get 100 requests a week doesn't mean you have to try to fulfill all of that. Just because you have all of these demands on your time and on you doesn't mean that you have to say yes. You get to decide because you're the master of your fate. The captain of your soul, as William Ernest Henley said in Invictus. And understanding that really changed the meaning of my life in that I was not no longer driven by what other people wanted me to do, but took charge of my own destiny, making choices based upon what do I feel is the next right move for me. I've lived with who do you think you are my whole life. Not from myself as much as what was reflected to me. Because who do you think you are? You, you're a little color girl, come from Mississippi. 
what do, who do you think you are? You're sitting up on national television. Who do you think you are that you can have? Who do you think you are that you can? So I used to fear hearing the term, who do you think you are? Or you must, think, you must be pretty full of yourself. Now I work at being full. I want to be so full, I am overflowing. So when you see me coming, it ought to make you proud. To borrow a line from Maya Angelou's phenomenal woman. When you see me coming, it ought to make you proud. And what you see is a woman so full, I'm overflowing with enough to share with everybody else. I'm going to own the fullness without ego, without arrogance, but with a, an amazing sense of gratitude that I've been born at a time where I am female on the planet and I have the great pleasure and freedom to fill myself up. Knowing who you are. Knowing who you are. Being able to answer this question, who am I and what do I want? You know, Many times when I go out of the country, I am baffled by that question to explain what is your occupation. I've, I've stood there for 10 minutes. Well, am I a talk show host? Well, I'm more than a talk show host. Am I a businesswoman? I'm a businesswoman. I'm more than a businesswoman. Am I an entrepreneur? I'm more than an entrepreneur. So I just leave it blank or self-employed. So I'm not asking for the roles that you play as daughters. I'm not asking that question. What are the roles that you play as a daughter, as a friend, as a sister? You're going to be a lawyer, you're going to teach, you're going to be a pharmacist. I'm asking the bigger question of who am I? Who am I really? My answer is I am God's child. I am, I am that which is born of all that is. I am, as Pierre de Chardin said, a spiritual being having a human experience of all that is. All that is possible is possible for me. That's who I am. And what do I want? I don't want to just be successful in the world. I don't want to just make a mark or have a legacy. You must have some kind of vision for your life. Even if you don't know the plan, you have to have a direction in which you choose to go. You want to be in the driver's seat of your own life because if you're not, life will drive you. So, knowing who you really are, in this space and time that we embody. That's number one. What do you want? Who are you? Always do the right thing. Always. Be excellent. People notice. Think of how you notice. You go to Taco Bell, somebody gives you an extra napkin and some sauce. You notice. You want to go back to that person. Because even at Taco Bell, excellence shows itself. Be excellent. You become unforgettable. People remember you. You stand out. Regardless of what it is, you become an unforgettable woman. And that is what we all want. We want to be unforgettable and not forgettable. So doing the right thing, even when nobody knows you're doing the right thing, will always bring the right thing to you. I promise you that. I remember many times on my show. There are many shows y'all never saw. And the reason you didn't see them is because I got the last vote. And I remember 2010, my team, hardest working team in television, had done this interview with a woman who turns out she was a Sunday school teacher by day and a sex addict at night. Ooh. 
And they were like, you won't believe it. We got her going out. We got her with the men. And we get to show her. And she was willing to show us everything. I sat down with a woman for an interview that was taped. And during the process of the interview, I said, why are you doing this? And she said, oh, I want to help people. I want to tell my story and I want to help people. I said, do you have children? She says, yes, I have a 10 year old son. I knew right then this is never going to see the light of day. So we got off the air and I said to the lady, we are not going to air that show. And she said, why? My producer said, why? She knew she was being filmed. She knew what she was saying. She knows what you, I said, because her son will never get over it. Her son will never get over it. And it's not worth a rating point to me. Not worth a rating point to me to know that there's a 10 year old boy who's destroyed because his mother went on the Oprah Winfrey show and told all her business. You do the right thing, even when other people think it may not be. And oftentimes, when you make a decision to do the right thing, immediately you're faced with doubt. Was that the right thing? Was that the right decision? I don't know, was that the right thing? You always know it's the right thing, when in the end, there is peace. You are rewarded by peace in knowing that you did the right thing. The most important thing I have come to know in doing the right thing and making the right choices is understanding what we talked about yesterday. All of you leaving here have the potential for enormous success. There's a price that comes with that. People don't always like you and they're not always happy for you. And if you surround yourself with people who are not accustomed to your success, they become fearful, they become scared because you are reflecting back something to them that they don't recognize. Now they're not gonna say, you know, I'm very fearful because you're reflecting back to me something I don't recognize. They're going to say, you know what they're gonna say. They're gonna say, who she thinks she is. Who she thinks she is. That only happens when you are around people who do not mean and want and aspire to the best for you. People who want the best for you want you to be your best. So my greatest advice to you is to surround yourself with people who are going to fill your cup until your cup runneth over.